All right, welcome back to Weigh the Wrench and on today's video we are going to take our coin door buttons and plunger that we hardwired and installed last video and we're going to do the back end work this time and we're going to get into future pinball, visual pinball and pin up popper and we're going to make sure all those buttons work like they should in those systems, get our accelerometer and our nudge working as well as our analog plunger. So stay tuned, you're not going to want to miss it. So just a heads up before we start this video, I am installing a virtual pin plunger kit version 3 and I'm using the virtual pin controller software in this video. Uh, so if you're using something else, there will be lots of good info in this for you as well in setting up your VPX and future and pin up popper. However, it is geared towards putting in a virtual pin controller. So let's go. Okay, next up for the instructions, it says we need to download the Virtual Pin Controller software. Now the link in the instructions is dated, so just go to where you purchased it, and there's a configuration utility. So we're going to download it from there. Saves as a zip file. So once you've got that saved, go ahead and extract this to somewhere where you can find it. Okay, and once you got that, double left click on here to open it up. And say yes to everything, and then you will find that you have a virtual pin controller icon on your desktop. So to access this, you're gonna double left click. And then up comes the controller. Now I'm just gonna maximize this. When you open this up, you'll be able to confirm whether your buttons are hooked up properly because they already have been assigned keyboard strokes. So for example, there's my left flipper, it's saying it's number 10. Left magnus save is 11. Uh, to start a game, it's number nine. To add coins, number 12. To exit the table is number eight. My coin door, if I open up the coin door, that's 15. Launch ball, one. If I push the plunger in, comes up as a different number, so that's kind of cool. Maybe we could use the sh pushing in of the plunger as a shift key for other functions. And then right flipper, right magnus save. So everything is working, and I can already see the tilt X and tilt Y kind of shaking, so our analog for our nudge is working already. X is good. From the front, Y is working. And we got a plunger. Sweet. Now, now that we've confirmed that these are all hooked up and working, we have to look at some other settings here. So we're gonna to go to view controller settings. And now we're gonna start looking at our actual plunger stuff. Now, it says uh, you need to pull the plunger all the way back and release. So you can see that as I'm pulling it, it's detecting that. So pull it all the way back and release. And then if you take a look, there is top right kind of section of this page is it says range 877. So the instructions it's saying to find that value and then you're going to take 50 from that. So that's going to be 827. And then the bottom middle of the screen, there's another box that says plunger range. Mine happens to say 843. It says to take 50 off the range value at the top. So that's 827 and put that there. 827. Okay, that's done and then it says click save. So we're gonna go file, save. Now, there is some suggested settings that would probably work best here. Uh, I'm tempted to just see how it's gonna work in a game. And if I have any problems, then I can come back here and you can see that there's quite a bit of individual tweaking to get the plunger feel as realistic as possible. So for right now, we're gonna kick out. Also says at the bottom that we should be enabling the mechanical plunger box. It looks like enable plunger is already there. I do not see anything about a mechanical plunger, so I'm assuming it's that one there. So save it, kick out. Okay, now that we've got that figured out, we actually have to go into the back end of VPX and pin up popper to confirm that those keyboard inputs are gonna do what we want in the game. So rather than opening up pin up popper, we have to go into VPX. So for me, that's gonna be PC, C drive, V pinball, visual pinball, and then just start V pinball X. And that's going to ask us which game, so let's open up Totan. 
Now, I don't want to be playing the game, so I can immediately kick out of this by pressing Q, quit to editor. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go up to Preferences, Configure Keys, and here's where you're going to tell VPX what each of those keystrokes and the buttons are going to do. So now refer to those ones that we just put in. So for example, the launch ball button is joystick one. So start game, switch this to button one. Right flipper is supposed to be two, which it already is. Three, right magna save, which it already is. If it isn't, you just pull down. So you just go through and get all of your buttons hooked up properly in here. Uh, don't forget you got your service buttons over here for the coin door. So for example, coin door end, I wired it up to be joystick number 15. So this is going to detect that the coin door is open. And then all my service buttons uh, to escape the coin door settings is four. The down volume for inside the coin door is five. And the up is button 14 and enter. So this is depending on the wiring that you chose for your pinball so just make sure it matches up with what you did this section here when you're setting up your plunger there's a couple things we need to talk about so first one is that your x-axis should be pulled down as an x-axis y is the y your plunger should always be z-axis now if you have your board mounted normally it should not have any of these reverse uh, check boxes clicked this section here is X max and Y max. This is the maximum amount of nudge that you're going to see displayed in the game, no matter how hard you push it. So that way you have kind of like a hard limit so that you don't have anything goofy and unrealistic happening in your game. So you can change those values, but uh, I left mine at 100. X gain and Y gain, this refers to how sensitive the machine is, or another way of looking at it is how hard you have to hit it. So the lower the percentage means you're going to get a weaker nudge effect. So you're going to have to hit the cabinet harder. If you increase this, then you can hit the cabinet a little softer and still get more uh, nudge factor out of that. Now, dead zone, it refers to a, having an area where there is nothing going to be detected. So the bigger this gets, there's going to be a zone there that you really have to hit the cabinet really quite hard until it detects it and shows it. So if you're finding that you're nudging and it's not showing up, you might want to lower your dead zone. And if you go all the way to zero, you may find that it is picking up and nudging when you don't want to because it is showing everything it's picking up in the accelerometer. So a quick fix for that is just to increase that a bit. And you can play around with how hard you need to hit it for it to actually be able to be moving the ball. Uh, I went with about 5%, but that's definitely going to be different per cabinet. All right, this spot here, enable nudge filter. Think about this as all of the raw data that is coming from the accelerometer, there's gonna be a ton of information and some of it might not be what you need. There might be some spikes in there and some weird shaking and things like that. Uh, so this filter helps clear that up a bit and makes your nudges more consistent. So uh, MGR Net recommends putting it on, trying it out, and if you don't like it, it's as easy as coming in here and unplugging this uh, checkbox here. Okay, we definitely want to enable the analog nudge, so make sure you click that. All right, now this one here, tilt sensitivity. Uh, this you're gonna want checked because we're using the accelerometer to detect how hard we're hitting the cabinet and how often. Uh, the number next to it, tells the cabinet how much you can actually slam on the machine before it triggers the tilt. So higher number allows you to hit it more, lower number is gonna make it tilt faster and easier. Now, if you have this checked off, then you're gonna to have to set up a mechanical tilt bob inside to let the computer know when you're actually tilting. So there's that option down the road as well. Now, as for normal board mounting operation, I'm not gonna select this. I'm not even sure why it's here. Uh, you could try playing with that, but I'm going to leave mine blank, and with mine blank it works fine. Accelerometer rotation, I'm not sure either, but if I had to guess, this is probably in case you were noticing that your mounting position isn't kind of 90 degrees and square with a cabinet, that you could actually rotate it to get it to change that. Uh, the other one here, Legacy VP9. 
non-realistic keyboard nudge. Uh, I'm assuming that if you leave that in, it leaves the old school hard nudges instead of having your little bit of nudges that you want with the accelerometer. So I'm gonna leave those all off. Okay, other than that, on the way out, before you press OK, make sure you come over here and you press Override Default Button Layout. That way it won't try to revert to the standard settings for the button and it'll save what you're wanting. Okay, once you have all of your information how you like it, you're gonna press OK. And then in order for this to kind of set or save, you need to close this out. Now, I kind of just got into the habit of file saving. If it lets you, great. If not, don't worry about it. And then make sure you close that out completely before you start VPX again uh, and try to see if your settings are good. Uh, that way it saves properly. Now that you've done VPX or VP10, keep in mind there was older legacy programs that are out there that some tables you open may need to use those. Uh, so we haven't set any of those up for our plunger and buttons. So if you're gonna use any of these tables, you will have to set them up individually. So for example, if I open up this one here and same thing, go to preferences, keys, you will notice that all the buttons haven't been put in. I don't have anything for my plunger, gain, tilt sensitivity, all the stuff we just talked about. So make sure you go in and set all that up. Uh, one thing you may notice between Pinball X and Pinball 9 is that the gains might be slightly different. So uh, in MGRnet, he suggests that the VP9 stuff was about 10 times the value needed for the right about a gain. So. Uh, for example, in VP10, if your gain was 100%, you may notice that in VP9, you may actually have to go up to 1000% to get the same kind of sensitivity. Now there's also instructions for future pinball. Uh, I haven't shown you how to install future pinball tables or anything like that yet, but there is a sample future pinball with uh, pinup popper. So in order for that to work, we're gonna have to change those as well. So we're gonna go back to VP pinball, go to future pinball, Start up future pinball. Okay, same thing, we're gonna to go to preferences, game keys and controls. All right, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna go over to where it says mouse joypad controllers and you're gonna enable this. And we're not gonna be saying this is a mouse. We wanna use the virtual pin controller. So we're gonna save joypad changes, sure. Okay, and then we're gonna go here and start putting in the numbers. So left flipper is 10, right flipper 2, and so on. So you just have to do the same thing and go through this. And then once you're all done, just press OK to save it. And before you exit Future Pinball, make sure you save it as well. Now just for your own knowledge, where it says left and right second flipper, that's gonna be your Magna save. Okay, now as for the analog plunger, it says the plunger should be the Z axis. Nudge X is gonna be X axis. Nudge Y, Y axis. Okay, now that I got this all set up, just press okay. All right, now that we've got that all done, there is one more thing that I don't wanna forget about, and it's the fact that we have to tell uh, VPX that when the coin door is open it's done a certain way because of the way we have mounted our switch so what we need to do is find our V pinball folder on the local disk C drive let's open that and then we need to go to the script subfolder so we're gonna go visual pinball scripts and then what we're looking for is a file called VPM keys so that's this one right here so we are going to Right click it and we're going to edit it. And what you're going to do is you're going to scroll down until you find the lines right here that say toggle key coin door equals true and inverse key coin door equal false. Now this is actually set up backwards from what we have with our coin door switch in there. So we have to change these. So make sure that you uh, don't change anything else. Just change the true to a capital F A L S E false. Go to the other one, take it out, capital T, R-U-E. Make sure you don't add any spaces, commas, any extra letters. Uh, make sure that the first letter is capitalized. Now, once you have done that, all you gotta do is save this. And then close this out. 
Okay, one more thing we got to do is we actually have to assign our buttons inside of Pinup Popper so that we can scroll through games and enter games, etc. Et so find where your Pinup is, your folder, open that. And we don't want front end, otherwise it'll start it. We want to go to config, so double left click that. And then we want to go to Popper Setup and go to Controller Setup. Now, you can see that these are the keyboard strokes, uh, what it is already, and then there's joy codes. So if you look down the list and find what you want to change, so for example, if I want to change menu select, meaning uh, start a game, or select what you're actually picking in Pinup Popper, which we already use enter on a keyboard, so this might help you with what key that actually is, you can go over here, double left click and it says press a key or the joystick button so if you press the button right on the cabinet it will change for you so i'm going to press another one just to see it change so you can see it's selected 11. so but in my case i actually want it to be eight so i'm going to go back to the actual enter a game and it changes it to eight so now just go through these and make sure that they match with the buttons you have now, to be honest with you, for pinup popper, for just basic functions, you just need to be able to scroll through the games, press enter and exit, and that's about it. Now, you've got more buttons though, so you can start figuring out all kinds of cool things. You could use the Magna Saves as flipping the next page of games, so you can cycle through games quicker. You could also use, let's say, the launch ball button to launch a recording, so that you can use that to input into pinup for the media file. Uh, so lots of other things that I'm not going to go into, but you guys get the idea. You've got all the buttons here to pick and kind of customize how you want this to work. So with that saved, uh, it, just close it out. All right, here we go. Let's do a little test with Pinup Popper Finalize. So left and right flippers selects what I want. Start game goes into a game that I want. Start again enters it. Please wait. I am now loading Loads up. up. And I'm just going to turn the volume down so that I don't have any issues with YouTube with the music. Okay, money in, press start. There's the ball and you can see the plunger is working really good so we can do little small hits and get those skill shots exactly how we want. Or we can do launch ball to do the same thing. Okay, flippers work. Let's see if I can pause the ball here, okay. Nudge. Okay, that works great. Okay, let's kick out of that. Remember, Retro Flare does not have an analog plunger, so don't waste your time with that one like I did. Uh, that's a future pinball table, so let's go into future pinball. I've added another one here. Select enter, enter. Could turn the volume up on this. It's just random ding dings. Okay, money in. Let's start the game. Flipper works. Plunger works. Do the same thing if I can. I'll try to pause this. No, oh, I did a little nudge to get it to the other side there. Nudge up. So nudge is working, plunger is working, everything's working great. Sweet, so I'm going to kick out of this, press the red button. And then uh, I did not want to have red button means that I get right out to my system menu where I can kind of kick out or shut this down. So instead it backs out to that as the last menu and then I actually used my extra plunger button in pinup popper mode if I push it in. That gets me to my system exit, or if I want to shut down the PC, and then I can just enter to do that to kick right out to my desktop or to shut the thing down. Okay, let's test the coin door. Open it up. You can see it's working there. Can change the volume up or lower it. And then just close the door at whatever volume you want there, and it will automatically kick you back into the game, and it does save. So if you were to kick back out, you'll see I left it at 19 there. Sweet, coin door works like it should. All right, now that you have your buttons, the nudge, and your plunger all set up, go ahead and open up Pinup Popper and see how it all works. Now, do not let me fool you into thinking you just put the numbers in and start Pinup Popper and it works like flawlessly. You're gonna have to go back and forth probably a couple times just to see what issues and mistakes you made, wrong button inputs, 
maybe putting two different things that there's the same button so when you press the button once it not only exits the emulator and goes back to popper but it actually exits popper and you're right back to your desktop things like that uh, you're going to have to go in there and adjust your power of your nudge settings for future pinball and vpx so that it's not cartoon like and you hit the cabinet and the ball flies up the play field and ricochets around so you got to adjust those things now this can be a little tricky and it doesn't take much. It only takes one little thing to throw you right off. And let's say VPX works perfectly, yet future pinball will not work. You can't get your plunger to work. It's not recognizing it. So there are a couple things out there that I have learned. So I wanna show those to you in case that happens to be your problem. So let's take a look. If you are having trouble with your plunger not working, buttons not working, these are some possible examples of stuff that might help you. So first thing here, go over to here bottom left hand corner and start typing in game controller. Uh, you can see it's popping up here. Okay, what you're gonna wanna check is make sure that it actually says virtual pin controller. It might say mouse or game controller or something like that, but it should be saying virtual pin. It says it's okay, but if we're not really sure, we could kind of look into the advanced settings. There's a pull down here. Could be something else there instead, so make sure it says virtual pin controller. Press OK to go back, and while we're here, let's check properties. Now, right here is your test function, much like the virtual pin controller program, so you can check any buttons and see that your plunger is actually working. And there's even some nudge capability there. So with this, you can tell that the basic function of that virtual pin controller is working. It just might be something that you haven't done yet in VPX or Future Pinball. Now, while I'm on this screen, do not use this calibrate and it says that right in the instructions for virtual pin uh, however if you did you can reset to default uh, but just stay away from this page use the virtual pin calibration method instead all right another thing that screws people up especially when they're having trouble with the nudging not working is that they have another game controller working that's hooked up to the pc so if you're not sure when you're on this screen you can also look to see if there's another game controller you might remember that, oh yeah, I've got an Xbox 360 controller plugged in, something like that. That might be uh, one of the issues as well. So just remove the other game controller and see if that helps you. Next one up, if you're having issues, pull downs aren't working in Future Pinball for you to be able to select your game controller, things like that. Uh, here's another weird one. So left click down here and start typing in keyboard language. And then you're gonna go up to here, edit language and keyboard options. Some people have reported that they need to make sure their keyboard is set to English US, otherwise it doesn't work. And even in a very weird case on a forum, some guy had a computer out there in the world and he had to put it to UK, even though he was down in the States, and it worked. So uh, just pull down here, make sure that it's on US English. That's all you should have to do for that one. If it's something else, you might want to give that a try. Another one that did pop up in my forum searches, it wasn't actually my problem, but it was kind of combined with something else, is that they were having Future Pinball crash on them. So what you're gonna to go to is your C drive, V Pinball, go to Future Pinball, and in BAM, there's a program called fploader.exe. So you're going to right click on this, go to properties, and go to compatibility. Now, what they were saying is that if they ran this, so you check off this little box, and make sure it says Windows 8. Now this allows it to be compatible for running this program uh, like it would be in Windows 8. Now this wasn't my problem, uh, but I did leave it on because some people complained about freezing for um, Future Pinball, so that worked for them. So click OK, or if you've just selected that, press Apply and then OK. Okay, another thing for Future Pinball, when you're in the game keys and controls options and putting in your buttons and stuff, when you were all done inputting everything here, make sure it says VP Controller, make sure that's enabled, and click this, Set as Defaults. Kind of think of it as a save, yet anytime it reloads, these should be the default option it ever goes back to if it has to. So that could be an issue there. All right, in Visual Pinball, once you have all your buttons and everything set up for your plunger, make sure that you check mark this so that you can override the default button layout. If you don't do this, 
it may convert to the default button, which is not what you have set up, and that might be an issue why you're not having it work. All right, now I'm gonna give you the one that stumped me for several hours, and I should know better than this. I was having VPX all set up properly, nudge plunger buttons worked great. However, future pinball only the buttons worked and the nudge, but no analog plunger. And I was using the retro flare table. Now, I didn't know that it wasn't an analog table, so the digital plunger would work, but the analog wouldn't. So don't get stuck with that mistake. Uh, here's something that you can do to start kind of testing and calibrating your nudge uh, a little bit safer way. So if you open up Future Pinball, not with Pinup Popper, but just the application itself, go to File and make a new table. And what you've done is made a new table with all the basic stuff, including an analog plunger. And so then you would press Play. All right, so what this does is it makes a table that is nothing on it, but we can use it to test our plunger and nudge. So put on a coin, press start, and you can see that my plunger is working and this is future pinball. So it did work and I couldn't believe this after three, four hours of messing with RetroFlare that that's what it was. It just, the, the table did not have analog support. So uh, plunger works. Let's see if I can pause it on a, on a flipper to show you the nudge a little better. Okay, so if I'm hitting for the right side, you can see that it nudged over. Left and up. Okay, so you can use this table to adjust your nudge settings so that it's what you want, whether it's realistic or a little bit easier so you're not smashing the crap out of your cabinet, but an option for you for checking your setup for future pinball. Now, once you get it working on this table, if you're having issues in other future pinball tables, why the plungers are not working, etc., it's going to be something with that table. Not every single future pinball uh, table has plunger support, so you're going to have to just kind of go through that and either use a digital plunger or uh, figure out how you can add it after the fact into the script, which is a little bit harder in a whole other video, so maybe I'll do something like that in the future. Okay, and then same thing for Visual Pinball X. Just open it up outside of Pinup Popper, and then when it's asking what table, select the Nudge Test and Calibration table. And there you go. So, test your flippers, plunger, and your nudge. Now, it's a little weird seeing all of the balls, and it's hypersensitive, so it's almost not as realistic as it is in games, so keep that in mind. But you can see that we can nudge left and right and up as well. So use these tables to figure out what you need to do. Now another cool thing, you can use the Magna saves to actually go through and select different things that you want to do. So you can actually increase the sensitivity and the gain for all the Y and X for your nudge as well. So once you select what you want to do, you can actually just go left and right flippers to adjust that on the fly so you're not jumping back and forth trying to adjust those in the back end. Pretty cool. It's a wrap in another video from Way of the Wrench. This time I had to install your buttons, get your nudge working, and your plungers. Now I know what you're thinking. There's probably a bunch of people out there saying, man, you didn't even light up your buttons. What a rip off. Well, the reason why I'm cutting the video off here is it's starting to get too long. So next video out, I am going to make a video on getting a cheap, if not free, 12 volt power supply, and modding it for your needs getting in a voltage regulator so we can get that voltages proper for the lamps up front. And while we're at it, we've got three screens plus a PC giving off heat. So we should really get those cooling fans in next and a very cool pulse width modulated board to get that going. So look forward to that video. If you have any questions about how we got this stuff set up today, uh, feel free to put it down in the comment section below and I will try to help you out as much as possible. And uh, the channel's growing like a weed, which is really quite awesome. If you would like to support me in what I'm doing, I would love it if you could share my channel out on your social media. That would be much appreciated. Till next time, take it easy.